The first step is to remove the six wing nuts that hold the access panel on the machine. The next thing I'm going to do is loosen the tensioner sprocket, which is a 15 16 wrench that you will need. This is the tensioner sprocket, which moves up and down to keep the tension on the chain. Now I'm going to remove the chain so I can access the pumps, the electric motor if necessary. The B pump is turning freely. Now let's check the A pump. Not so easy to turn. Even though the electric motor was able to turn it, I cannot turn it by hand. Therefore, I'm going to remove it off the machine and rebuild it. Remove the hose clamp that holds the tank onto the frame simply by using a flathead screwdriver. The next step is to remove the tank, which is done by hand here. No tools necessary. Now that I have the tank off of the machine, the next step is to remove the hose from the bottom of the pump using an 11 16 wrench. After that is off, you're going to remove the pump off the frame itself. Using a 3 quarter inch wrench and 3 quarter inch socket, you can loosen the two bolts that hold the pump onto the frame. It's much easier to remove this pump off of the frame instead of trying to rebuild it while it's still attached to the frame itself. Okay, once I have my pump in the vise, I'm going to remove the eight Allen bolts that hold the back housing on. Once you have all eight bolts removed, there's a female thread in between the two bolts right here. And you can simply use the same bolt and thread it in on one side. As you can see, the housing now starts to remove. On the caddy corner, there's the same thread that you can use to screw the bolt into and it will help remove the back housing here. You have to alternate the screw back and forth to get it to come off of the pump. Next, pull the back housing off. As you can see, the gasket ripped, which is no big deal because you will be given a new one in your seal kit. This right here is the bypass system, which is not used on this machine. So no need to remove these bolts and clean this part. Just leave it all assembled. Next, I'm going to remove the smaller gear and shaft from the housing. Using a rag, I put in the vise to clamp onto the shaft, not to damage it. You need to twist the pump as you pull on it, which will help remove the small shaft and gear from the housing. Next, we need to remove the second gear from the main drive shaft itself. There's a large retaining ring on here that you need to remove using a pair of snap ring pliers. There we go. There's a small snap ring that holds the bearing in place, which you can leave on there. Okay, our next step is to remove the second gear off the main shaft itself. By clamping the pump into the vise makes it much easier. Using a dead blow hammer or plastic hammer, tap on the main shaft. Down, and then come from the other side and tap it up. As you can see, I created a gap now on the gear from the housing. Using a small shim or washer, place it underneath the gear in between the gear and the housing. Now repeat the process. Tap the shaft down, and then tap it back up. Now I created a, a bigger gap in between the housing and the gear. Repeat the process with another washer. As you can see, I used about 10 washers to remove this gear off the shaft. Remove the gear. Now remove the washers I used as shims. Now there's a small key that holds that gear on place on that main shaft that you need to remove using a pair of pliers. Next, remove the entire main shaft out of the pump by tapping with your hammer. 
Okay, now that we have our main shaft removed from the housing, we need to remove the old seals. Using a small pair of snap ring pliers, there's a retaining ring that sits on the shaft. There it comes off. Make sure not to lose that as you will need it to install the new seal. This first seal is a mechanical seal, which is a Viton seal. As you can see, it is very swollen up, which is part of the reason that our pump was not turning well. Next is the Teflon seal, which sits inside the seat retainer. Okay, our next step is to make sure we clean all of our parts. I'm gonna use this wire brush here to clean these gears. It really gets into the grooves there. Next, I'm going to clean the back housing. Down in these pockets right here, you're going to have a lot of buildup of old epoxy. See that right there? There's a big chunk of it that you need to remove. There's also another pocket down here that you need to clean out on the main housing. More of the debris that you need to remove. Just over time, it gets built up in there. And in this front housing right here is where the mechanical seal sits. And you'll see a lot of buildup in here too. Next, I'm removing the small Viton O-ring that sits inside this housing. You will get a new one with your seal kit, so don't worry about saving that. That's trash. Go ahead and get in there and get all that old epoxy out of there. Very nice to have a, a wire wheel to really get in and buff some of these parts out. I'm using this wire wheel for the back housing. And then the main drive shaft right here to clean off all the old stuff. 